Friends, tonight I am beginning a two-part series which will be concluded next week. And I hope to let you have some inside information as to the real J. Frank Norris. Most of what has been penned by the pundits do not recount the stories and events in the life of J. Frank Norris that really tell the true story. And I've entitled this video as long as this happens. This phrase shaped the early ministry of J. Frank Norris. These words were spoken by a man by the name of J.T. Pemberton who served on the pulpit committee that called J. Frank Norris as pastor in 1909. The story of this man, J.T. Pemberton, gives evidence which rebukes the false claim that J. Frank Norris eventually parted company with most of his one-time associates. This is one of the lies that has been perpetuated. Of all the thousands of friends which Norris encountered along the ways, none were more loyal than J.T. Pemberton. In the end, at the time of, up until the time of J. Frank Norris' death in 1952, he considered J.T. Pemberton as the best friend he ever had. And for that reason, the story of J.P. Pemberton needs to be told. And that's what I hope to do tonight, beginning. Initially, J.T. Pemberton opposed Norris at the beginning as pastor of the First Baptist Church. As it turned out, however, this man, who was the leading banker in Fort Worth, Texas, and for 38 years was in a position to befriend his pastor on more than one occasion. Strangely, it was J.T. Pemberton who cast the lone dissenting vote in 1909. Pemberton later explained the logic for casting a negative vote. In addressing his fellow committeemen who were responsible for calling J. Frank Norris as pastor, Pemberton stated, if Norris comes as pastor, you can be assured we will not all be the same before long, for we are not ready for his type of preaching. But if he does come, and when the fight is on, a lot of you fellows are going to take out, but I want to serve notice now. I will stay with him to the end. This accounts why J. Frank Norris considered J.T. Pemberton the greatest friend of his lifetime. And this is indeed is a fascinating story which in all likelihood has never been told in detail. That's why that I want to deal with the positive aspects of the life of J. Frank Norris. In the midst of those early years, controversy soon developed into front page news as the city fathers pursued means by which to silence the straight talk of Norris against vice and corrupt politics. And this is where the story of J.T. Pemberton begins. These city fathers tried to intimidate Mr. Pemberton by threatening to close his bank unless he cast his lot to rid the city of this troublemaker, uh, which was a, an epithet so uh, often heard concerning J. Frank Norris. So, J.T. Pemberton stood his ground and defied all of the would-be enemies. A typical reply to these would-be Norris assassins went like this, and of course I speak figuratively. It's quoting J.T. Pemberton, I think that any man that God Almighty can get along with as well as he does with J. Frank Norris, I, J.T. Pemberton, will also get along with him too. Such loyalty would be hard to match, which J.T. J. Pemberton exempted time after time. Friends, thank you for listening. Part two will continue next week. Thank you, and God bless America.